For this video is a bit of an opinion piece, a talking head video of sorts, and something which I think we really should discuss. Most, and I use this term with no disrespect, users of a computing device, be it a phone, a tablet, a laptop or a PC, use their device in a simple way, for browsing, social messaging and maybe a light game or two. This is more often than not done using a browser, such as Chrome or, to a lesser extent these days, Firefox, or indeed with the first browser they see, and in the case of Windows, it's Edge. The average user doesn't care what the OS is underneath, it's all the same when viewed from the browser, and no second thoughts are given to the mysterious inner depths. Only when something goes wrong, the browser crashes, the internet isn't working, and worst of all, the, the device doesn't start up, does the user even begin to think about the OS. And then, in an abstract way, they tend to think of the problem as being that the internet is off, the picture on the screen isn't working, or the device seems dead. The usual remedy to these unsurmountable problems is to either call a tech support, an IT whiz in the family, or simply buy a new phone, tablet or PC. Getting into FreeBSD requires a whole new mindset. The way you think about your computer will change, and the ability to fix and solve any problems will be within your grasp, and not some strange arcane ritual that only a nerd would understand. But it takes time, and many tribulations, to get to a point of almost a zen-like calm and understanding. FreeBSD can help you use your computer in a better way, and you will become a better person. Number 1. FreeBSD Awakens Curiosity when most people use a Mac, Windows or even Linux these days, it doesn't require or elicit much curiosity from the user beyond what they need to do with the OS. Mac OS, Windows, they come pre-installed so the user may have never installed their OS. And perhaps beyond the odd one or two pre-installs of Linux, the user at least has had to install the OS. But the process is hardly taxing and can be achieved with the lowest of interest or skill set. Once you start your journey with FreeBSD, you will be immediately plunged into the innards of your system. From the boot menu, the partitioning, learning about ZFS, loading kernel modules, creating or editing config files, and backing up data, these things would unlikely be touched upon if you were only using Windows or MacOS for your day-to-day -day computing. And Linux? Well, in the drive to appeal to a more normal user base, many distro makers have almost foregone Anything in the install or usage that remotely looks like either Linux of old or Unix in general. Many encourage the idea that you don't need a command line, that you don't need to learn, just use. Look at Android, for example. It's a Linux kernel dressed in a sweet GUI. You even get the Linux community arguing amongst itself as to whether Android is a distro of Linux. But you know it is. It's just a bit of pill to swallow. FreeBSD isn't sugar-coated. It isn't a glorious, multicoloured, candy-coated piece of confectionery. Even the more user-friendly derivatives of FreeBSD aren't this removed. GhostBSD, for example, is easy to install, yet allows the inner workings to be explored. In fact, it encourages it, or at the very least, doesn't hide the ability. Vanilla FreeBSD will, after installation, just sit there like an abstract piece of modern art, awaiting your interpretation or artistic input to make it your own. It doesn't hold your hand, doesn't treat you like a child via a colourful interface, nor a fool by allowing dangerous elevated privileges with no or very little input. Number 2. FreeBSD allows you to learn new things. It's almost by default that when you start using FreeBSD, you will be learning FreeBSD. You will learn how to update the core and the user land. That's after you have installed something, of course. You will learn how to add users, how to add a graphical user interface, how to configure your internet, and so on and so on. Things that would have not been on your radar previously. Initially, you won't have pretty GUI tools to guide you, just text-based manuals or man files, and a community that will help but not patronize you. You will always learn something new when you use FreeBSD. It's an ongoing process that even seasoned users are sometimes surprised by. Number three, FreeBSD allows you to explore file systems. In FreeBSD, at the most basic of understanding, everything is a file. 
residing in a directory. It's perhaps a little bit more nuanced than that, but you get the picture. And to use FreeBSD, you are interacting with the file system from the start. You may need to change directories to add or edit a config file. You may need to create a directory in order to mount your USB storage device or NFS mount point after editing the file system table config to specify what partitions and drives to add, etc. It's all very exciting and essential knowledge. And while it may seem complicated at first, like all things, it gets easier the more you delve into the world of file systems. Speaking of which, you will need to learn how to load up Linux, Windows and macOS compatible drives if you want to share or swap files with the other OS users. And in doing so, you will learn the basics of file permissions and how to enable or disable read-write privileges. And then there is OpenZFS. The implementation in FreeBSD is superb because the licensing issue that prevents it from being fully implemented into Linux isn't an issue with FreeBSD. You can bet that it fits like a glove into the FreeBSD ecosystem. Of course, there is also UFS, or the Unix file system, which is a distant descendant of the original file system used by version 7 Unix. It has a long heritage and is as solid as you could ever hope for. It's used on many USB sticks and external hard drives in the FreeBSD world. You will learn the differences between the root directory and the user USR directory and why there are two bin directories. It's a clean and extremely logical file system in FreeBSD and it doesn't change from one release to the next just for the sake of change. Number four, FreeBSD encourages a better workflow. I'll be honest here. There are perhaps some advantages to using Windows or MacOS, and that's in the realm of software. If you can avoid virus and malware and Trojans, the software for both of these systems can be pretty good. Adobe, apart from the business model, is something that I would be interested in using because of the video and audio products they make. But I can't use them on FreeBSD, and now I use the alternatives. Caden Live, Audacity, LibreOffice, Inkscape are quite mature now and very effective. I use them on a daily basis and I've grown to appreciate their power of which I have barely tapped into. And as a user coming from those two OSs, you would adapt too. Linux users have this as well, so anyone coming from that side will know what I mean. FreeBSD has access to GUI applications just like Windows, MacOS and Linux, but it also has some great and invaluable text-based or TUI or console-based applications as well. From music players all the way to Formula One scores, you can have anything you like in the console, something that is perhaps remiss on the other platforms to a greater or a lesser degree. Perhaps because it is initially a text-based or console-based OS, FreeBSD seems to provide a better experience when using these text apps. It's subjective, I know, but it feels right. You will become more productive as you learn new ways of doing things. And it's been said that it's faster to use key bindings on console apps than wading through menus in traditional graphics-based programs. Number five, FreeBSD will help you socialize. Although the user base of Windows is large, it's very large, you get the sense that it's not a cohesive group. It's split along version lines, use lines, and even those who want to use it or those who have to use it lines. You don't get a family vibe. You get a disparate sense of lots of people whose only connection is that they are, for whatever reason, using Windows. You will get Windows fanboys, of course, but it seems not as many people will install its virtues, unlike MacOS, Linux, and FreeBSD. Each of these other groups will seem closer. MacOS users are, well, to put no gloss on it, mostly professionals who are using it as part of their job, and perhaps not as a passion or a leisure activity. Linux is too fragmented. Lots of choice, lots of different groups, and amongst them is a rivalry and perhaps snobbery, to be honest. For example, Arch users like to think that they are perhaps better than Ubuntu users, who perhaps think that they are better than Void, and so on and so on. Not to mention the differences between the user base when it comes to System D. It seems that instead of coming together as they perhaps did in the early days of Linux against Windows, the Linux community seems to be wanting to be like Windows in the sense of its user base. FreeBSD is FreeBSD. It has one code base, one distro for want of a better word, and one unified user base. Yes, I know that there are a few OSs derived from FreeBSD, but each are regarded as their own OS and not FreeBSD, even though they are clearly based upon it. This ensures that there is no infighting, no rivalry, and no snobbery. And because of this, the community gets along much better and is a lot closer to the goals of FreeBSD. 
And this is reflected in that you can mix with and interact with the developers of FreeBSD easily via social media, and they are quite willing to help with any issues that may arise, something that can't be said of Windows, Mac OS, and some Linux distros. Number six, FreeBSD enables a greener life. It's a fact of life that we all, if we're lucky, get older, and it's also the case with hardware. FreeBSD helps to bridge the digital divide and extend the life of hardware, making it an eco-friendly choice for an operating system. Whilst Windows and Mac OS move on from older hardware, in their definition, so that new versions of their OS will only run on recent or at least two-year-old hardware, Linux is a little better, but not much. Many distros have decided to have only 64-bit editions of the OS. And while 64-bit has been out now for a good few years, there are still some older machines that could be excluded. Not to mention that even in the 64-bit machine, with low resources, could still benefit from a 32-bit version. FreeBSD offers 32-bit and 64-bit. And because it doesn't come with a GUI out of the box, and it doesn't have any unnecessary baggage, it is perfect for low resource as well as powerful servers and desktop installation. It is true to say that if you are a gamer, you may not want to choose FreeBSD, or indeed Linux or Mac to be your first option, and older equipment is similarly off the menu. And that's fine, it's a different market. But for all other usage and older systems, with FreeBSD will suit most users just as well as a new expensive one with Windows 11. Probably better in the long run, actually, considering that you are free from the threat of virus infection and malware, something Windows and Mac can't claim, and even Linux has started to experience an upsurge in the threats. The truth of the matter is, you can tailor FreeBSD to meet any need you want it to, and it's not defined by the vendor, it's defined by the user. You can keep your older hardware, your older peripherals, and still make good use of them. And in fact, some people may complain that FreeBSD doesn't have a support for the latest and greatest must-have tech. And if you believe this to be the case, then keeping your older stuff makes sense. And why not? If it still works, then use it. In this day and age, even the oldest computer, such as the systems I use, such as my HP Z600, is more than capable of serving my needs. Number 7. FreeBSD will teach you the value of open source. A Windows user and a Mac OS user will probably spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars or pounds in software over the course of their OS's lifetime. And that will be predominantly closed source proprietary software. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There are many such pieces of code that are essential in order to get things done on those platforms. When I was a Windows user, which was a very long time ago, I used to use Adobe or Macromedia, as it was then, to design websites, edit audio video, and generally do the things we all need to do on our systems. When I shifted to Linux, many of the titles I'd used were no longer available, and in their place, there were open source alternatives. Applications such as the GIMP, OpenOffice, etc. all became staples. But as Linux grew in popularity, there was a shift to try and get as many window apps into Linux. And fast forward to today, and there is Microsoft Edge in Linux. There's also moves to tie Linux and Microsoft closer together at a kernel level, and there's almost an abundance of proprietary and non-free, non-open source software available to Linux users. Even Steam on Linux is a normal thing. People who use Linux are not ideologically driven to use open source software, and perhaps don't value it as perhaps they once did or should. Indeed, there seems to be a rush to embrace all things non-open source, with users losing sight of why Linux grew so popular. It was a counterculture of sorts against the man, the big bad wolf at the time, Microsoft. Being a FreeBSD user, many of the so-called advantages of Linux are not available. Steam is unofficial. It works, but through clever workarounds. There is also no Microsoft Edge, thank goodness, and no apps such as DaVinci Resolve, etc. Only open source software. But you're thinking that's bad, right? No, not at all, as it forces you to use the OSS open source software alternatives and learn them you will have to if you want to use FreeBSD as your main system as I do. And this I have to thank FreeBSD for. I have learnt, for example's sake, to use Kdenlive Live on FreeBSD. I can use that now in Linux if I have to, Windows if I must, and MacOS if I ever get the chance, if there is a version of course. But the situation would be different if I had learnt Final Cut on a Mac I'd be stuck using that, or stuck on Windows and Mac if I had learned Premiere Pro. So do you get my meaning? Using FreeBSD, learning on FreeBSD, enables you to move to any platform, whereas the other systems will 
by either design or by default, lock you to them. It's the same as if you were a coder, I would imagine. The restrictions of coding on Windows and Mac and Linux with its GPL could be stifling. But with FreeBSD, with the wonderfully permissive FreeBSD licensing, it's liberating. No wonder some of the world's largest companies use FreeBSD as a base for its products. Truly, FreeBSD enables you to be free in every sense of the word. If you agree or disagree with any of the points I've raised, then please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'll wrap this video up now and say thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software. 